Hey guys, this is Panacea making it up, and yeah, Panacea was quite a movie to film. Um, we had a lot of twists and turns throughout. Um, we had a film for quite a while, actually. Um, at, the end, at the end, it turned out alright, I guess. Um, we started off fairly, oh, fairly bumpy, uh, because we required shots in the beginning, because this was for our comp tech class. In fact, I'm making it, making it for the Comtech class as well. Um, but we required shots, but a lot of people were unavailable, so I ended up green screening myself in front of a um, green screen uh, on December 18th, I think. Um, and I handed those shots in, uh, and they got approved, apparently, so it was good. Um, and <clears throat> so. I mean that was good. I mean, and the only part where you can see me, uh, I was green. I was going to screen myself with a tie, and it's like a little kind of like semi-formal uh, wear that I'm that I was wearing at the time, and I wasn't really. I didn't really know where, where I was going with that. I mean, I, I I mean, it wasn't necessarily part of the script. I mean, it was a little part of the script, but I didn't really know where to include it, um, and ended up including it like a, maybe like a quarter to the movie where the first. Um, second, sorry, the second green screen scene comes along where the background is all black and he sees his friend Mark and there's like a fire and all that. And then, and then the next day, the very next day, uh, I asked my friend, Matt Sandell, I mean, who's in the movie, I mean, as Charles, the main actor, uh, to pose in front of a green screen and do some green screen footage. Um, and it turned out alright as well. If guns don't kill people, people kill people. People kill guns. Does that mean toasters don't toast toast and toast toast toast? Okay. Oh. Um. Wait, <laughs> wait. Just, 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 just. Okay, like that. Just going off. All right. One more time because the lighting wasn't exactly the. It wasn't exactly prime. Okay. No. Damn it. Can you turn around a bit? Um. Maybe. The other way. Is this for your movie accent? Hmm? Yeah. Easy green screen. Go. Alright, that's good. Again, we didn't really know where we were going. It was a bit it was a bit too general what we were doing. We were doing mostly we were mostly doing the just the one of the parts for green screen where we actually had the uh, material. We didn't. We didn't need any material because we're objects such, such as a spoon, the mud, the the container, all that, and the rice and all that. You know, all the, all that stuff. We didn't have that, and we didn't. We weren't really. We weren't really sure what to green screen because at, the, at that point of time, the this the, the um, script uh, didn't have anything added to it. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, and you know that was kind of that was kind of a quick. Series sequences of shots that I that we filmed. We had to also refilm some of the shots, some of the shots later on, like a month later, almost a month later. And then December eighteenth, what was that? December eighteenth was were the outdoor shots. So the the near the near the end of the movie, there's an uh, outdoor shot where where Charles is approaching Mark, and you can't really see Mark's face much in this uh, shot. You can only see the side of his face, which was intentional. Originally, Mark's face was never supposed to be shown, but based on the amount of uh, based on the amount of dialogue and all that stuff Charles had, we had like no other choice but to make his face visible in the movie. Actually, the parents' face were the parents' face also were supposed to be hidden and not shown to 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 generalize the entire idea of like a dream aspect more dream slash drug slash whatever you want to call it because there's a lot of interpretations of us. So. And the day we shot this, it was pretty cold, and um, I was kind of oblivious. And I told the uh, the actors, we're just like, oh, let's we'll just go outside and film a few shots. But I didn't tell them we we're going to go into the field. So I uh, ended up, uh, so Rhiannon Henkelman used to, uh, I ended up soaking her feet in, in the snow for Jim. Sorry about that. And uh, but we but the filming was was uh, was pretty great. Rhiannon did a pretty good job uh, um, filming that. Uh, I used some post stabilization. Uh, like afterwards, just to make it more smoother at times, because I felt like smoothness was a like was was um 
was needed in that scene because uh, I wanted to the, uh, the contrast between the smoothness and the actual extreme shakiness to be huge. Um, what else? And yeah, we did quite a bit of shots, and Matt Sandell also was also was also like going crazy, and then he he kind of you know had to go into the snow, had him dive into the snow, oh. hands on, and it was like <laughs> negative 15 degrees, and you know. No, I was, I was, that was pretty good. That was pretty okay. generous um, on this part to do that. Because uh, most, some people, a lot of people would just say no and just decline. Uh, December 23rd was the next day of filming. Oh yeah, and this day was, we f and this day we on this day we filmed, what did we film? We filmed the kitchen scene. Uh, sorry, the, the scene where Charles comes home, his mom tells him, did you hear about the news? All right, Mark. Action. Action. Okay. Action. <laughs> it's you in the mirror, my peripheral vision. I scheduled everyone to meet up at the school near the rocks, but uh, since I'm very not specific at all, uh, Matt Sandell ended up um, joining, like uh, Matt, Matt Sandell or slash Charles Owsley, uh, ended up um, trying to meet us at this other area where there's a metal sculpture uh, uh, that a student made in our school a long time ago. And that didn't really turn out too well because, like, because he, he was waiting for 20 minutes there in like, a sw in like a thin sweater and he was cold and then the snow was literally like three feet deep when he was trying to walk back to us when we finally found him. December 23rd, 2013. Uh, so what After just happened? After a series of misadventures, we finally start our trek back to my house. The long trek which I left half lost. an hour ago. I got, I was given shitty directions. True, true. I can't feel half my face. Yeah, so what happened was uh, I was being a dumbass and I didn't plan out like where we were supposed to meet Cora, like accordingly. Oh, let's let's meet at the rocks at school. And plus, Give I was too how many vague. Fucking rocks there at school. <laughs> okay, that'll not happen again. And uh... there's a road right there. I'm not doing this. <laughs> and so we went to Matt's and Dell's house and we started filming different things. Um, we filmed what? We filmed the kitchen shots, and um, they're pretty. I don't, I don't know. It was, it, was, it was pretty fun to film, especially the dolly zoom shots. We had like, like we had me going doing the dolly zoom thing for like a minute and a half, I think. And it was, and he just had to stare to the, into the camera, like right at like the uh, right at the lens of the camera, right like right into the very center of the camera, right, right in the very center of the lens. And that was that was kind of funny to film. Um, I kept laughing, and. Um, January 5th, um, now this is finally 2014, so this is what the scene where Mark invites Charles over and then we decide to play some video games and I start coughing, Mark starts coughing like crazy and then Charles wonders what happened and then I start, and then there's this one part in the scene where, where I'm, I'm explaining like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to avoid the entire aspect of me dying to Charles so, basically, after finishing my like dialogue, my lines, yeah. I st suddenly stare at the camera. Okay. And I, I don't know why I started, started staring at the camera, I just thought it would be cool. I stared at the camera, and I just stared at it for a good 15 seconds, or 10 seconds maybe. Hold up. Or 10 to 15 seconds, and I don't know why I did it, but it just it was pretty cool, so, you know. It was included in the final cut, because why not? Um, and then, Charles leaving was also pretty fun to do. Um, like and then Charles, we had that. We had a bunch of shots of a bunch of angles of him leaving the house, and it, and we had we will also maintain that really awkward conversation for a while. Yeah. So when he was walking home to his mom's place, which we filmed like a good half a month earlier, um, we had a lot of shots of him walking specifically because um, walking shots for me are like really interesting. I don't know why, but it just have they just have a certain mood to them. It's a it's transitioning from. 
it's it's just this kind of dramatic irony that he's walking home and the audience the audience probably slightly already knows what's going to happen uh, the audience does not know directly what's going to happen until a little later on but they already have a good point that Mark is in bad health and Charles is just walking home probably not suspecting a thing I mean it's just he's just coughing a little bit otherwise what would the, be the point of him coughing or Mark coughing in the first place so we had a lot of those shots and he and there's one shot where he's just walking we had a we had we had him out on a tripod and he's just walking uh, for a good minute and towards just towards the tripod and in post-production after effects although this could have been done in the premiere as well uh, I since I was editing I frame by frame I took the image and I make made sure his head did not move I made sure his head like just remained more or less static uh, and his body just moved so the the shakiness that that occurred was 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 just post because we were actually we actually have it had on a tripod so it was still the background was not supposed to move but his head moved so it was cool and it was four seconds and that took me a good hour to do um you yeah, know we just filmed a lot of the shots and that was pretty interesting um so next to january 7th january 7th yeah uh here was filming like on january 7th we filmed a really really hard scene to film one i consider one of the hardest scenes to film in the entire movie just because we didn't have we didn't we 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 had um a sound cue that was was going up and we needed a lot of equipment first of all we had to um we had to take we had to get the room from our uh, from our drama teacher and who was who gladly gave it to us and he actually when since there was a meeting in the uh, for uh, like a musical happening at our school he actually moved over a lot of the people to another room and that I thought was really generous so we had to, so we filmed in the drama room and we had a dolly and we had a tripod a microphone and, uh, this little pocket my microphone that was that was right in, uh, right next to uh, in, uh, Charles's arm and that was and you couldn't see it but so we, the reason we had the microphone there is because if the farther in the, way the camera goes the less the audio is heard so the microphone is really essential for that and plus the uh, the camera makes really weird no wearing noises once recording audio if you haven't noticed in the movie you probably have noticed because it's really significant um, and uh, it's just simply it was pretty hard to film because for the first time uh, we were unprepared I, I thought I sent an email to Matt or Char Charles or Matt. I'm just gonna call him Matt, whatever. Um, that we we're gonna be filming the day before. I, I tried. I, I thought I sent him an email the day before, but he didn't respond, and I wondered why. But then I realized I haven't. I didn't really send the email. I just. I just. Try, I thought I sent it, but then I was actually saved as a draft. So I was like, oh. Shit, <laughs> this is not good. So. He came in, he was more or less not prepared, and he you know, had a little like, a jacket maybe, and he was sitting down. And I mean, it was, it, was a nice, it was a nice shot, but lighting wasn't exactly the best either, so. So the next day, when we filmed the scene, which was, I think, January 8th, Rhiannon and Gab were not in there, so the mother and the father were not in these scenes, and they, and we, we got the room again for the second time, and we had Sammy help with with the with the sound cues because we had to play the radio announcer's voice in order to achieve the proper timing so the proper cue because the the that would be the cue for uh, Matt to speak up because this is all one continuous shot there's no intercutting between this and since the radio voice is already pre-recorded I mean, we couldn't do anything about that and so we filmed that without Rihanna and Gab and it turned out all right uh, we ended up, I ended up um, editing because I wanted Rhiannon and Gab to be in the final shot, to be, I mean, to be in the scene. So I had a scene slightly glitched up. I had a little, um, a few um, warping effects, a few, a few, all that uh, to make, to make the, uh, a few like maybe noise on the TV and all that stuff. Because I wanted to have the viewer get adjusted to the fact that there is going to be a little bit of that going on in the scene. So when, uh, when at the end of the scene, where, um, where the, where the parents hug uh, Matt and Dell, which was, which was a funny scene. Apparently they were laughing like crazy. The, the audience wouldn't get too um, wouldn't get too be wouldn't get too unfamiliar with the concept of, uh, in that scene because each scene has a general mood to itself, uh, which was intended. Um, January twelfth, 
Oh, this was a quite a day. Um, so basically, we were filming at Matt Sandell's house, and Gab was there. We had some issues filming. Well, not really issues, but uh, like more. It was it was more like we can't act kind of issue, or more like I can't act because. When there's one shot, the very first shot of the scene, where Matt Sandell is coming to the door, through the door, he 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 says, "Hey, man," and I say, "Hey." My face apparently the entire like during that shot was so funny that like Matt Sandell kept laughing and I kept laughing. And there's one point where he came in and I was just crying of laughter. Action. Action. Hey, man. <laughs> really? Sorry, it's, it's not curable. I, I have no wine. I have no wine? Oh shit, my head, sorry. Action! Action! <laughs> Action! Hey man. Fuck! Fuck! Action! Okay, action. <laughs> action. Um, so we, I think we did that, we shot that scene a good, at least a good 15 times, minimum. Um, and then we had other scenes to film, uh, which more or less went fine, fine, fine. Uh, there we had medication, we had medication uh, stored near the cabinet when we were filming the final shot. What else we had? We had January 14th green screen. So this is when we finished the, all the green screen special effects shots, I think. It's the day we all did that. Um, and we, and I, the night before, at 12 a.m., I think, or 12.30 in the morning, I went outside to our backyard, looked for mud, and there's snow everywhere. Like, this is Canada, right? So there's, like, a foot of snow everywhere. So I had to find this one area where, this is, where there was mud, and it was still really, really chunky because it was, like, frozen. And I scooped it out with a metal with a metal spoon and like I put it in the bag and I was and I in the dark you kinda seem as if like it kinda seems to you like as if you hallucinate because it's kinda it's kinda as if like your ISO, like if it's if it's if it's not camera wise, if your like your human ISO has been bumped up so high that everything's like jittery and everything's uh, like um, you're really noisy. So when I picked up a mud, a piece of mud and I looked at the and I and I looked through the um, plastic bag. It kind of seemed as if there was like worms crawling in there. Even though I went when I went back home, there were no worms. There was just pieces of grass. But anyways, I kept putting those worms back out, and that was that was pretty it was pretty bad. As for the rice, the rice was bad, so I didn't want Matt Sandel to eat it. So Matt Sandel was just doing really weird green screen things. 
Uh, and at the end, um, towards the end of the green screen filming, we had a clock to film, um, and that was pretty. Uh, it's pretty. It was pretty cool because uh, Matt Sandell had to drop it. Well, I ordered him to draw it, drop it, and that turned out to be a pretty cool scene. Although it did make a lot of noise. All right, drop it. That was the final day of green screen shooting. Okay, January 16th, and this is the final day of shooting, like, the final day of shooting. This is the day where we shot the scene where the parents are just are saying, are, are just like, we're so disappointed in you, Charles. Why would you do this? We do, you, do, you, don't, you don't care about us. Like, you don't, like, like they're, they're expressing their emotion because later on in the movie, you realize that Charles gave up or compromised a lot of his, a lot of his studies uh, to help his friend Mark. Uh, but in the beginning of the movie, you don't know what's what's going on because you you see these parents just just telling their son that's what's sitting on the floor. Like it's really odd. They're si he's sitting on the floor, and he's cowering down, and he's and he and he's just feeling a bit ashamed. The intent the intent of the scene was to was to make was to make the character lit a bit less intimidating that he uh, or like a bit less confident or a bit less. A bit less of what he would be later on in the movie. We had a lot of fun filming this scene, specifically because one of the actors, Gabriel DeFrisco, didn't have much experience acting a very yell, angry go, role, a yeah, very yeah, angry, enough, like a very angry dad. So one of the actors, Gabriel DeFrisco, he didn't really have much, um, he didn't have enough. much experience playing an angry dad. So we used yeah. this psychological oh, trick to make him angry by redoing his lines over and over and over and You've over had again. Yeah, so Matt, so Gab got pretty angry at the end of that, and his acting seemed pretty realistic. So that was that was really fun to shoot. Um, and then the eye. There's this one part where we shot the eye of Matt Sandell, which I, which I incorporated uh, through um, the numerous parts of the movie, like uh, such as the white, uh, the white scene where there was a where we where he's um, or he's like cowering because it's so bright. Uh, I decided to include that because it would be a bit trippy. Um, also near the end where the um, I just before he wakes up, there's a um, hallucination, like a really that weird trip scene, um, and there's the eye, and then I also flipped it, and then looked really, really cool, looked really uh, out of this world. Um, and Matt Sandell uh, put a lot of water, or um, he put something in his eye to make his eyes all red. I think it's like, uh, yeah, I think he uh, used some eye drop or something like that, and it worked really, really well. Um, I think it worked really well, and so basically that's, if it didn't work well, I wouldn't include it. Oh, I'm sorry, how many days? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We had ten days of shooting. Ten days of shooting, panacea. I don't know, for movies, for a movie that's 12 minutes in length, that's an average, yeah, it's like an average of 1.2 minutes. That's So 1.2 minutes of film a day. I mean, a lot of the scenes weren't even actually 1.2 minutes. A lot of the scenes were 40 seconds, like 45 seconds. Just some of the scenes in the beginning of the green screen, like the scene in the beginning of the green screen, took up like, quite a bit of time. And plus, there's the credits in the beginning, which took a good 40 seconds. So all in all, there's like an average of a minute actually per clip. So you know, that's fairly accurate. And you know, um, but this movie, this movie, I wanted to, like, when I was writing the script, I wanted to do something special for the final year of grade 12. Um, oh, sorry, the the final year of ComTech. And I'm taking grade 12 ComTech even though I'm in grade 11 because why not? Um, I wanted to make something special just because I, I wouldn't, because I, I'm going into engineering. So, and I don't think movie, uh, like in the movie industry is a very good field for me to go in because it's very, uh, because you can't find a job in that field unless you have intense connections. So I decided to not. To, this is my this is my last time taking it, and 
I don't know, I just really enjoy making movies, so I'm gonna probably make more movies in the future, but it's not gonna be for my marks. And it's not gonna be as, it's not gonna be working um, along for other peers that are making movies as well. The entire atmosphere of the class and the entire atmosphere of the situation, the entire atmosphere of movie making is just perfect. All the challenges we had to overcome, such as getting the actors, looking for people, you know, getting all the props, getting, 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 getting the dolly, getting the teachers, and uh, getting the teachers permission to do to do to do use the green screen and to use the dolly and to ha use the drama room. Thanks to Mr. Kesner and uh, Mr. Mentor and Mr. D'Alessandro as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, my bad. Sorry, sorry for putting your uh, your curtains uh, that we were using for green screen on the floor. That was that was kind of a stupid, oblivious task that I did. Um, but, yeah, um, I thought the movie turned out pretty well. As for the post-production, the post-production was pretty interesting. Basically, I spent a good 50 or 60 or 70 hours on post-production. And for such a movie like that, um, you'd wonder why the quality isn't better. Well, that's because uh, at the time, a lot of my, a lot of my um, efforts were put into specific scenes, like before other scenes were shot. And uh, towards the end of the... Towards the end of when this project was due, we had a lot of other really, really, um, really editing intensive scenes, like green screen scenes and special effects and all that, which took a fair bit of time. Um, to render all that, to do all that, it just took a while. The final few days of uh, before this project was due, I actually spent a good 20 hours on the weekend on this. Um, so that's now 10 hours a day. Um, I spent until 6 a.m. or 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or something like that. I think it was 5 a.m. or maybe 5:30 a.m. Uh, I don't really remember. On on Saturday, like on the on the morning of Sunday, from from Saturday night to on, I was working on this, and then I got up at 9:30 or 10 to work on the film again, um, and I worked on it for another five hours, I think, and then I had to go to another swimming class. But you know, all in all, I think this movie. What turned out really well uh, could have been some other a few adjustments to it But by the way, thanks to all who participated. Thanks to Calvin Mills the uh, the radio voice I didn't mention you thanks to Matt Sandell Charles also. Thank you to Rhiannon Henkelman to uh, uh, the mother thanks to Gabriel DeFrisco the, the f I can't remember basic names for the father um, Thanks Thanks to Mr. Minter for helping uh, for helping us take the drama room uh, during that one of those scenes we were filming. Thank you to Mr. Kesner to um, for bringing us the tri for bringing me the tripod and the and the and, and the um, a zoom recorder and and the, uh, the microphone the portable mic and the um, and the and the dolly. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Christian for lending me his USB in times of. Uh, in times of a uh, desperate need <sighs> thank you to Sammy thank you to Sammy Johnson uh, for helping uh, us with the sound cue um, and in just monitoring how things were going giving us tips and it, it was just and yeah thank you to everyone thank you to Miss Alessandro as well on for letting you use the room and letting us use the lighting equipment um, and yeah, so without you guys, you know, it would, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be what it is right now. So thank you all, and um, yeah, this is this is Maxim Kuzmenko, and I approve of this making of.